Al Gore sharing the Nobel Peace Prize, but his concerns not shared by all. Marlo Lewis is a critic of Gore's global warming claims. The senior fellow at the Competitive Enterprise Institute has written a skeptic's guide to an inconvenient truth. Thanks for being here. What was your reaction when you saw the announcement this morning? Well, I was not surprised, but I was also displeased. Why is that? Well, I don't think that Al Gore's policies, which the Nobel Committee celebrated and mentioned as one of the reasons for giving him the award, the award lead to peace. Rather, I think those policies lead to global instability and, and political strife uh, within nations, between nations, because basically what Al Gore and the global warming crusade want to do is put an energy-starved planet on an energy diet. And this is a recipe for poverty, and poverty does not lead to peace. It leads to conflict. So if he had gotten some other type of award for his work uh, regarding global warming in particular, you would be okay with that? Well, uh, as, in, as in, you know what I'm saying, the Nobel Science Prize of some type? <laughs> I wouldn't be okay with that, but for, for uh, a different set of reasons, which is that uh, an inconvenient truth is basically a lawyer's brief for a political agenda. It's completely one-sided. Gore only mentions or cites studies that supports his point of view. He then exaggerates, in many cases, the evidence that he presents. In some cases, he's just plain wrong. For example, 20 feet of sea level rise in this century is, is not in any sense a scientific possibility. That is science fiction, but Gore presented it as fact. It's scaremongering. Uh, well, well, let me interrupt you just for one second, because yes. for the people out there, the average American who, who does not have the science background and is trying to really make sense whether or not this uh, phenomenon is occurring, number one, two, whether or not man caused it to happen, um, how do I know what you're talking about? What evidence in particular, what science is really behind uh, your positions? Okay. I did not dispute that there is global warming or that mankind is causing a lot of the warming that we've seen in the last 30 mm -hmm. years. That, those are really uncontroversial uh, posi or, 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 or propositions. Uh, it's the fact that this means 20 feet of sea level rise or the claim that Gore made uh, very heavy handedly and an inconvenient truth that the devastation caused by Hurricane Katrina was driven by global warming that really is a fabrication and it's manipulative it's a form of fear-mongering and so that's politicized science that's not real science how should it have been written how should gore have written it that particular point about katrina uh... well he might have pointed out that when katrina made landfall it, it was only a category three storm so the devastation that it caused you, there was no reason to think that it was because of some kind of extra oomph that it got from global warming because we've had category four and five storms before the era of global warming. What he should have said was that there was 30 years of government failure to build adequate flood defenses for New Orleans. And that was the real root of the tragedy. So uh, overall, then, let's talk about the idea of, of global warming. Should people be concerned about it? Should there be someone out there that is getting dialogue to happen? That is one of the things that was said in the announcement this morning for the Peace Prize, is that you know, Al Gore is someone who has basically gotten people talking about this. Yes, he's gotten people talking about it, and we can give him credit for that. But the way he's gotten people to talk about it, is manipulative and misleading. He, has, he is presenting global warming as a planetary emergency. Uh, in other words, this is, this is a civilization ending catastrophe that's unfolding and that is simply not based on science. And the tragedy here is that he is now diverting public attention, political will, and potentially trillions of dollars in global resources from much more urgent threats to human welfare like HIV, AIDS in Africa, malaria in Africa, malnutrition all around the world, waterborne diseases. These are le lethal killers that are killing millions of women and children uh, a year, and we could address those and actually save millions of lives for a fraction of what we are going to spend if we follow Al Gore down the Kyoto Road.
Well, trying to give some equal time here to obviously an issue that is still uh, very much in the forefront and still very hotly contested. We appreciate your insight. Marlo Lewis. Thank you very much. Thank you. A mother and her children.